Wire crowd here at Bush Stadium. The Washington Nationals against the St. Louis Cardinals. The winner to the World Series. And hi, everybody. We welcome you from St. Louis. Great to have you with us this afternoon. Brian Anderson, along with Jeff Francoeur and Ron Darling. We'll hear from Lauren Shahadi in just a moment. Well, the road team stole the show yesterday. Adibal Sanchez going seven and two thirds, no hit innings. The Washington Nationals pick up the, uh, the first win in this NLCS, Jeff. And it is the Nationals who have been on this magic carpet ride of a road trip here, and they're going to keep it going. It's been a whirlwind for them, but they'll take it any day of the week. It started back when they got that big win at home against Milwaukee to send them. They come out here, Daniel Hudson with the big strikeout of Corey Seager in L.A., sent it back to Washington where Zimmerman in game four hits the big three homer to send it back where Howie Kendrick sends them into the NLCS last night and all they do in St. Louis is Anibal Sanchez goes seven and two, three, no hit innings last night. And this is a team for eight days, guys, has been back and forth all over the place. But as Dave Martinez says, they love it. They're going to stay here tonight after the game, get their sleep, and get back to Washington. But first, we got a good pitcher matchup. <laughs> I think the pedigree of these two pitchers are amazing. It'll be tough for them to outpitch the two guys last night. But this is a game, in my opinion, that the St. Louis Cardinals have to win. It's not a better person, leader, or performer than Adam Wainwright. You see the experience he has in the postseason, and he might be throwing the best baseball he's thrown all season long. In game three, he outpitched Mike Soroka, seven and two-thirds scoreless innings. He had every single pitch working. And if you include the playoffs, he is now nine and four, ERA 2.37 here at Bush Stadium. Well, while the St. Louis Cardinals are the home team here today for game two of this NLCS, it is a hometown kid who could be the story this afternoon, Max Scherzer from the Missouri Tigers in Chesterfield, Missouri, is back on the mound here in his hometown, Lauren Shahadi. That is right, VA, born in St. Louis, grew up cheering for the hometown team, even drafted by them in the 43rd round back in 2003, but opted to go to University of Missouri instead. So when he became a free agent, he thought, you know what, I'll go home. But the interest from the Cardinals wasn't mutual. It was something that frustrated Max Scherzer, something that the Cardinals ownership later called a miss of epic proportions, I'll say. And in true shirts or fashion, he was asked yesterday about being in St. Louis. He said, I got a game to pitch. I'm not worried about much else. <laughs> but we saw him in that Cardinals hat, didn't we, VA? Yeah, no kidding. He's been a longtime fan, but he is a big-time foe here this afternoon. Three-time Cy Young Award winner Max Scherzer, two-time world champion Adam Wainwright, world-class pitching matchup. Game two coming your way next. You draw them up when you think about October postseason baseball 60 degrees not a cloud in the sky downtown St. Louis is the setting and Max Scherzer game face is on trying to push the Nationals to a 2-0 series advantage before they head back to Nationals Park St. Louis Cardinals are trying to flip the script once again they've done that so often in this postseason twice turning back the Atlanta Braves in elimination making their way after winning the Central Division to the Division Series, and then a thrilling comeback win in that series. Mike Schilt and the Cardinals arriving to this NLCS. Now, I Black will be necessary today on a bright, sunny day. The shadows will be a factor. You figure the outfielders are going to have their difficulties at some point. Great doubleheader of postseason baseball today. Don't forget the American League Championship Series starts on Fox. The Yankees and the Houston Astros, and we get the day started here in St. Louis, a great baseball city with the Nationals and the Cardinals. Let's take a look at the batting order presented by Geico for the Washington Nationals. Davey Martinez, the Nat skipper, turns this one in today. Just one change down there at the bottom of the order with Kurt Suzuki catching. So it goes Turner, Eaton, and Rendon at the top. Juan Soto, Howie Kendrick, and Ryan Zimmerman in the middle with Suzuki, Michael A. Taylor, and Max Scherzer rounding out the starting nine. A 2 nothing win yesterday for Washington. Second time the Cardinals have been shut out in this postseason. And no better guy to give the ball to than Adam Wainwright. 38-year-old right-hander pitched a gem in the division series against the Atlanta Braves. And a spot, Ron, where you talked about 
the need to win this game. It's not an elimination game, but it kind of feels like it for the Cardinals. I, in my opinion, they can't lose this game, and I think they have the right guy out there. Over 300 starts, 162 wins, over 2,000 innings pitched as a Cardinal. I can remember 2006 when he struck out Brandon Inge and got a world championship in 2006 for the Cardinals, still pitching important games in 2019. He faced the Nationals in the postseason in 2012. These two teams matched up in a dandy of a division series that went five games but Wainwright struggled he's got some demons to exercise here today Jeff he went two and a third innings in that game back in 2012 he gave up six runs he gave up three home runs that was seven years ago to the day that outing against Washington in the DS yeah but he's a big time pitcher knows exactly what he's doing 38 years old he's built for these moments right here and now catching them the, for the 279th time today, nine time gold glover Yadi Molina, so familiar with each other, work great together, always back there for him. Going around the infield, you got Carpenter, DeYoung, Wong, Goldschmidt at first. We all know about him defensively. And in the outfield, Azuna, Dexter Fowler, and Edmund Manning it in right field today. Familiar starting lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals. They have remained the same, fifth consecutive game now with Carpenter in the starting lineup at third base. All the pieces in place. Trey Turner makes his way to the batter's box. And Adam Wainwright ready to make this crucial game two start for the Cardinals against Max Scherzer of the Nationals. Umpiring crew today, it is a six-man crew. And Chris Conroy will call the balls and strikes. Bill Miller, Phil Cuzzy, Chad Fairchild, Field and Colbreth, and Mike Malensky are the base umpires. Well, Wainwright was just pacing around that mound like a like a caged animal. Can't wait to start this game. And you can already see the effects of the shadows creeping out over home plate. That's going to be a story here as you heard Curtis Granderson mentioned in the pregame yeah. show. First bullet from Wainwright is a strike and away we go. This can be one of the brightest ballparks for whatever reason. Players always talk about these late afternoon games. Right off the end of the bat, broken bat, the young makes a play, and that's how this game two begins. And I think it's a huge advantage for Adam Wainwright with these shadows early, with the off speed he can throw, keep guys off balance. And listen, he had a chance to pitch game one. They went with him at two, also can get him for six if they come back here. 1.48 here at Bush Stadium in his career in the postseason. Wow. Wainwright has reinvented himself as a starting pitcher does it a lot differently than he did back in those days 2012 and then of course prior to that he came up as a reliever part of the Cardinals World Championship team in 2006 as a reliever on the mound at the end for that dramatic World Series victory. Wainwright deals to Adam Eaton and there is a strike at a 69 mile an hour curveball from Adam Wainwright. The slow get me over curveball for Wainwright. <laughs> Eaton has nice numbers against Wainwright, and of course he'll drop that big curveball on him. Eaton in the air, left field. Ozuna coming in. DeYoung going back. It's Ozuna to make the play. And there's out number two. Didn't look like Ozuna had any problem locating that ball right there. Jeff, you've played in this ballpark in the twilight before. What is the challenge for an outfielder here? What's tough is up top, you see there's little areas where the sun will shine through sometimes. I think it's only going to get worse probably in about another hour. I think it'll be a lot more difficult. Let me ask you, no clouds up there. Is that harder or easier? Well, I, I think, you know, you saw that right there for yeah. Zuna. No sunglasses. No. A lot of times, sometimes, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not going to help you one way or another. You just got to hope it's not right in your <laughs> eyes. Two outs, and here is Rendon Ooh. as Wainwright gets ahead of him with strike one. We did see Dexter Fowler lose a fly ball off the bat of Ronald Acuna in the division series. Ended up as a triple for Acuna. And even Fowler, who plays Fowler. here all the time, it just can be extremely difficult. Difficult in left field to start and then ultimately in center field as we uh, get toward the sunset of this Saturday afternoon. One ball, one strike on Rendon. Rendon is seeing the ball as well as anyone. That ball's what, two inches off the plate? He takes it like it's 10 inches off the plate. 
Yeah, you can see it right here. He was able to lay off this. But he knows, hey, he's one for 16 off Adam Wainwright in his career. So one of the few guys that's really gave him troubles. Had a hit yesterday, did Rendon. He walked twice, was one for three, and hits a rocket to left field, a base hit. Anthony Rendon, who led the National League in RBIs this year and hit 319 this year, third best in the NL, delivers the first hit of the ballgame. Yeah, he's trying to go two-seamer away, I think, right there. And just just got it up a little bit. You yeah. said the numbers one for 16 and that hit had come six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? They're probably not too mad that it's just a single to left field the way he's seeing the ball right now. Nationals a terrific offensive ball club especially with runners in scoring position a team that does not strike out much. They put the ball in play. They hit the ball hard It's a formidable offensive attack. Juan Soto is a big part of that and Jeff we hit the air yesterday and you looked at the two middle of the order bats for each team the Rendon Soto combination and the Goldschmidt Ozuna combination. Well, they've been the heavy hitters for both those teams in the NLDS and as you see right there a little slider action something to keep an eye on Soto yesterday five at bats guys. 22 pitches 19 off speed mm. and they held him at bay one for five with two strikeouts and a ground ball that went through th the right side. Soto had a chance to break the game wide open turns out the Nats didn't need it with their great pitching yesterday. And by the way for Washington Daniel Hudson is back he has returned to the team they were without their closer yesterday. So Hudson returns to the ball club after he and his wife welcome in their third child born uh, yesterday morning. And Hudson is back in the mix. Doolittle with an inning and a third. Four up, four down for the save after Sanchez went seven and two thirds, no hit. Soto, that's a strike. Cool. Called strike with the cut fastball on the inside corner, and it's two and two. Remember in yesterday's ball game when Miles Michaelis got behind, he stayed with the curveball. You saw a little change there from Wainwright who went with the cutter. Five curveballs, four sliders already. The slider cutter. See what he has in mind. 2 2. Rendon at first. And Soto fouls it back. I mean, you have to imagine that the Nationals gearing up for these first at bats after winning 2 0 yesterday. Try to put the pressure on, take this crowd out of the game. It's a sellout today here in St. Louis, of course. These kind of games. Good job. These kind of games you're praying in the first inning. That's right. Two balls, two strikes. Wainwright deals, and that one just missed a little high. And you have seen a lot of fastballs, cutters to Soto here this first inning. You wonder a little bit. He's trying to take advantage of the shadows right now. Doesn't probably want to show him that curveball maybe too many times. Mm -hmm. Save it for the second, third time. Although I wouldn't be surprised at a 3 2 curveball here. Soto, one hit yesterday, was one for five. There goes the runner, Rendon, and a swing and a foul. So on the move with the 3 2 count. And the count remains full. Rick. Soto doesn't have to take batting practice off a curveball machine. He just has to appear in these games and he's going to see plenty of them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's going to get a lot of looks all year. Uh, he is one of the great young players in the game, Juan Soto, one of the great young hitters. Sees a lot of pitches. Hits righties well, hits lefties well, all of it. Rendon goes and a swing and a miss. Wainwright strikes him out with a cut fastball. Good start for Wainwright. Cardinals coming up. Nationals fail to score in the first. Now it's time for the Cardinals to bat against Max Scherzer, Dexter Fowler, Colton Wong, Paul Goldschmidt at the top for Mike Schilt. In the middle, it's Marcelo Zuna, Yadier Molina, then Matt Carpenter, Tommy Edmond, Paul DeYoung, and Adam Wainwright will round it out. Two excellent hitting pitchers, by the way, in this matchup. And Ron, Mad Max at 35 years of age, gets the ball here in game two. His fourth appearance in the postseason. Five innings, three runs in the wild card. Again, game two relief. He struck out the side, and then seven sharp innings in game four with just giving up an earned run. Dexter Fowler, the switch hitter, back in the leadoff spot. Been a rough postseason. Only has two hits. 
has hit the ball sharply in this postseason but nothing to show for it. And the Cardinals after being shut out last night couple of streaks going here the Washington pitching staff has 17 consecutive scoreless innings going in this postseason. The Cardinal offense has 15 consecutive scoreless innings in this postseason so a couple of streaks that uh, both uh, would like to end here shortly. Watch the velocity of Max Scherzer early. If he's at 95 96 with execution that's much better than the overthrowing 99 to 100. Two and one to Fowler in there for a strike. And that's a perfect example right there. He's able to stay within himself, throw off speed pitches for strikes. And right now, as we said, the shadows are bad. I remember I used to come and tell the pitchers, the outfielders, a lot of time, pound strike zone right here. Guys can't see. Two and two on Fowler. Now Scherzer has allowed first inning home runs in both starts this postseason. He gave up. A home run at his start of the wild card game to Yasmani Grandal of the Brewers. And then in game four of the division series, Justin Turner got him. As Ron mentioned, his fourth outing of the postseason already. Had that relief appearance in game two of the division series. So he is full throttle into this 2019 postseason as he misses with a 97 mile an hour fastball. And for the Cardinals to get going guys I know Fowler's hit the ball hard two for twenty six him and Wong have to find a way to get on base for Goldsmith and Azuna. There's hit, hitting it hard but this is an execution game yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know result game right. Fowler needs to see some results for his own good and he swings and misses change of pace got him and Max Scherzer's day begins with a punch out and catching Sir Scherzer today Kurt Suzuki back behind the plate after game one resting back up same infield as they've been going Rendon Turner Kendrick Zimmerman at first in the outfield young Soto and left Taylor and center and Adam Eaton in right field there's a lot a lot of changes by any teams mm -hmm. in the postseason. Only change for both teams today is uh, Kurt Suzuki who gets the call behind the plate with Jan Gomes not just navigating those pitchers Sanchez and Doolittle through the game but also had a couple of hits including the first RBI of this NLCS. A terrific game yesterday give him a lot of credit for his work behind the plate with Anibal Sanchez who was magical in game one yesterday. And suddenly we're. Not just talking about the big three of the Washington Nationals with Scherzer and Strasburg and Corbin but you can make it the big four now with Sanchez's effort last night. Two and oh to Colton Wong. No Cardinal starter had a hit yesterday the only hit was the Jose Martinez pinch hit single that came with two outs in the eighth broke up the no hitter. So a bunch of callers for the Cardinals starting lineup from last night as Wong draws the walk on four consecutive pitches and the Cardinals have a base runner with one out and their big bats coming up. Something to keep an eye on right here base dealers this year. Off Scherzer, nine of ten. We saw Wong last night ran really good. I would expect maybe to see him sooner and later take off. Scherzer facing Goldschmidt, two former Arizona Diamondbacks, and a wave and a miss. Goldschmidt up there, aggressive. As far as the running game goes, Suzuki. With the injuries this year, he's not throwing the ball well, and teams have been just picking him apart. 41 for 42 successful stolen base attempts going back to May 5th. Only base runner he threw out was a catcher, Yasmani Grandal of Milwaukee. Well, it's on the pitcher also, it's not only the catcher. And Max uh, is not great at holding runners. His move is really consists of a, a spin and a lob. Doesn't usually throw the ball too hard to first. One ball, one strike. Long pause. There's the lob. Starting to track here with Jeff's thoughts about home plate, the brightness of it. You think it's just an outfielder issue, but Paul Goldschmidt rarely swings and misses and just swung and missed. Matter of fact, going back to game two, he's just. 
Swung the bat 29 times. He's whiffed just once prior to that swing and miss to get into a 1 1 count on Scherzer. There goes Wong. And a swing and a miss. And a throw to second. And Wong is in there with a stolen base. That hit Kendrick right in the palm of the glove. I think it was going to be a short hop. So Wong steals second. Cardinals and the Nationals at the top of the National League this year in steals. And the Redbirds are running early. Yeah, and he got a good jump right here. And you got to try to make something happen. Get someone in scoring position. Well, it's almost like Howie Kendrick didn't see that ball to hit mm -hmm. him in the heel of the glove like that. Suzuki's like, that, that's as close as I can get. <laughs> Runner at second base. In scoring position for Goldschmidt. One ball, two strikes a count. And he bounces it in. Good block back there by Suzuki. And that's the pitch that Goldschmidt's had trouble against in his career against Scherzer. Yeah. Scherzer, Goldschmidt's two for 25 off Scherzer with both singles. That slider has really given him issues. 14 punch outs in those yeah. 25 at bats, too. Now he's going to call Suzuki out with a right handed hitter up. Don't forget or sleep on Colton Wong at second base. He'll also steal third base on you. After last night's game, I feel like Colton Wong is 100%. Yeah, he is running well. Had a hamstring injury third week of September. Stolen base game could be important. Steal a base, steal a taco is back, by the way. If someone steals a base this World Series, Taco Bell's letting all of America steal a free Doritos Locos. Tacos. Two and two on Goldschmidt. And a swing and a miss. Three whiffs. Goldschmidt down on strikes. Second out for Scherzer, his second strikeout. And that's another slider right there. All three pitches that Goldschmidt swung and missed on were these sliders right here through one fastball way to get him off it. Max is one of the few pitchers that has the ability that he three quarters the ball he throws from the side but he gets his hand on top of the ball and they're even good hitters there's some pitchers they just can't pick up the ball that's an early cue right there you don't see Goldschmidt swinging this very often he does it three times and down he goes for the second out now it's Ozuna and Ozuna wave and a miss another slider rare that Ozuna would swing at the first pitch looks like he had made up his mind he had taken the first pitch in 26 consecutive plate appearances he swung at the first pitch in the first game of this postseason against Dallas Keuchel and uh, decides to pull the trigger now and he waved at a slider I think Scherzer was with him that slider looks tight today for Scherzer. I mean, it is a nasty down-breaking pitch early. And that's why I think he's attacking these hitters with that right now. If you look at these shadows, guys, Scherzer's out in the sun. Then you got the shade right there, and you see how it's about to be sun right where he's in it. That's the most difficult thing when the ball's coming in and out of the sun. It is tough to pick up. And I think, you know, Goldschmidt, listen, I know that slider's good, but he definitely didn't see that ball either. Two outs. Wong at second. Reached on a four-pitch walk. And the 1-1, one -one. Ozuna fouls it away. Fastball. Cardinals not getting on base much. Leading off an inning in this postseason, just a 200 on base percentage. There's been some discussion whether the Cardinals and Mike Schilt should rearrange their batting order. Mike Schilt dismissed that thought. He likes his order. He thinks Fowler is swinging the bat well, deep counts. He's not producing results, but he's liked the contact. Colton Wong's back in his two spot in the order. He thinks those two at the top will set up Goldschmidt and Ozuna. And a swing and a miss. Scherzer grunts his way to a 96 mile an hour fastball. And he strikes out three in the first. Strands a runner at second. No score. We're off and running. Big double. Uh, set up the first run scoring opportunity for the Nationals. And then Kendrick had a two out RBI. And all across these playoffs this year, you're hearing managers discuss 
not just the veterans, the experience, the culture changing kind of players that are having a major impact. You certainly would put Adam Wainwright in that category as he matches up with Kendrick to start this second inning. Old guys can still play. <laughs> That's a new motto. That's a, my new motto. I like it. Well, I think they also can get the best out of some of those young kids. Yeah. Houston Astros, perfect example, bringing Carlos Beltran, Brian McCann, Josh Reddick with Altuve and those guys. It's a good mixture. Cool. Adults in the room is uh, what you hear from these managers. And don't forget that the older players get a lot of energy from sure. seeing the young players and, Absolutely. and how they go about their business. Kendrick on the ground is short. This is DeYoung. And there is out number one. Let's check in with Lauren Shahadi. You could add to the conversation, Lauren. Yeah, you're talking grizzled vets. Adam Wainwright told me he models himself off Albert Pujols. He said what set Albert apart from the really good players was how he never took an at-bat off. He adopted that mentality and said, I truly treat every single game like it's the World Series. It's tiring, but so does Yachty, so it works. He told me he and Yachty are brothers. We play constant mind games on the mound. He gives me a look. I give him a nudge. We have our own language. We both feel at home when we're on the baseball field. Mike Schilt was asked, Adam to Yachty, does it feel like 2006 again? He said, yep, isn't it a beautiful thing? Well, I think when you think about uh, Wainwright, he has 138 of his 162 wins have come with Molina as his starting catcher. They have almost that uh, telepathy communication as they can just give a look or a nudge but the way Wainwright talked about the way Molina will even give a sign will give him a tip on where he wants to go with the next offering or the next sequence. It's fascinating. Ryan Zimmerman speaking of a couple of old heads match it up and Wainwright deals him a strike one and two the count on Zimmerman. It's also when you're in the fall of your career and you never know how many more chances you're going to get in the postseason the pitch uh, it gets your attention. You're going to soak up every opportunity you have. You heard Zimmerman say it in an LDS. I'm to Ted Barrett. This is what I'm going to miss these moments. Zimmerman hits a shot. Oh, oh, oh. what a pick by Wong. Wow. Colton Wong. He'll get some gold glove votes this year. He and Ozzy Albies, two of the premium defenders at second base. And he shows a little gold glove form right there. That left the bat at 101 miles an hour. And Wong picked it clean and made the play for the second out. Mm. Nicely done after Zimmerman made that diving catch yesterday. Out of the shadows. That's what I say. I don't even think he saw it at first. Took him a second to pick it up. Great play. Well, he's really turned himself into an excellent defender, working with Jose Kendo all those years, coming up through the minor leagues and then into the major leagues. It's hard to think now, but back then, Colton Wong was thought of as an offensive first second baseman mm. coming up, and he's turned himself into an elite second baseman now. Cardinals led the National League in fielding percentage, best defensive team in the NL this season. They were dead last <laughs> last year. Suzuki at the plate. Take strike two. Think about it. They had 133 errors last year, 66 this year. Yeah, and those pitchers for the Cardinals will tell you it's so nice to know now you can get ground balls knowing those guys behind you are going to make the plays. You don't have to go for the big strikeout. The sellout crowd wants a big strikeout here. 0 oh, 2 the count on Suzuki. His first start of this NLCS. Made it through concussion protocol, took that that <laughs> wicked hit by pitch in Los Angeles. I mean, that when that went down, uh, you thought it was going to be major damage, major problem. It, it actually clipped the wrist of Suzuki. That might have uh, saved him from further damage. Uh, dinged him. Certainly had to come out of the game, but all things being considered, he came out of that well. Gets his first start of this NLCS. Jan Gomes was in there yesterday. Frenchy, you were there for this. I mean, this is as scary as it gets. You've experienced this as a hitter as well. I'm anxious to see how Suzuki comes back after this. You know, he's a catcher, so he's tough. But I'm telling you, when that happens, that first ball that comes high and tight a little bit, it reminds you of, you know, the feeling of being down there like mm -hmm. that on the ground holding your face. So just glad he's okay. 
Here's the 0-2 pitch and Suzuki half swing. He goes. Strikeout for Wainwright. His second three up three down inning. Wong makes a spectacular play at second base. And Wainwright has got the Uncle Charlie working early. Has so many weapons in the three strikeouts he had in the first inning. A changeup to Dexter Fowler, a slider to Goldschmidt, and then the fastball painted to Ozuna. So you're always on the defense when you're facing Max. And he faces Yadier Molina to start this second inning. Molina Carpenter and Edmund do up. Scherzer with three Ks in the first inning. Had a four pitch walk to Colton Wong. And then he comes right back to strike out Goldschmidt and Ozuna. I don't know if Molina ever saw that pitch right mm -hmm. there, the way he took it. And Scherzer misses with a fastball. Two and one the count. First time Max Scherzer has paid three in a first inning of a postseason start. Did so only once all year. He did it on opening day against the Mets. Remember in his relief appearance against the Dodgers in the NLDS he struck out three in his relief appearance. And that he was also throwing 97 98. I like what you said in the first inning. He's still sitting at that 95 struck out Azuna 96 not 99. Mm -hmm. If he stays there he's got a good chance to go deep in this game. 2 2 pitch. Yeah, Molina fouls it away. You know, Dave Martinez talked about Scherzer pitching here in St. Louis. Cardinals have beaten him twice this year. He had a rough outing in September here in St. Louis. Nationals are fighting for a postseason berth. The Cardinals, the same. I mean, both of these teams feel like they've been in playoff mode for the last month until they entered the postseason. But Scherzer's line, not quite. Indicative of how he pitched that game. It was a late afternoon start, and there was a fly ball that was misplayed by Soto in left field that allowed three more runs to score. But he has not had success this year against the St. Louis Cardinals as Molina rolls over one. Got plenty of time here with Molina running. And Rendon slings one to first base. One away here in the second inning. Uh, Frenchie, is this why you're in the booth now? Watch the overlay of pitches of the fastball and slider of Max Scherzer. Whoops. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good up here. <laughs> Just nasty. It, it's so tough because his fastball explodes. It, it literally will jump on you and rise a little bit. And then that slider, as, as B.A. said, even today, it's got such good bite to it and it's tight. It's so tough. You have to hit a mistake for him. Th those pitches just change lanes. That's what they do. Yeah, it's, it's impressive and it's coming at you with some velocity as well. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that Jeff Francoeur has some home run numbers against Scherzer and Wainwright as a matter of fact. And what, you got I, him? what did I just say? It was a mistake. You got him. <laughs> there is a there is there's a lot of K's too right? behind that. Well we don't look at those. Now you're <laughs> up here you get to be selective in your statistics. <laughs> Every hitter has a book. <laughs> Ron Darling never gave up a hit in oh. the big leagues. <laughs> Matt Carpenter takes a strike. Yeah. But seriously, Jeff, if you're facing these guys on a day like this, give us an idea what a game plan might be in a moment like this. To me, with Wainwright, it's a lot like a Clayton Kershaw. It's a right-handed Clayton Kershaw on the fact that you have to find a way to lay off that curveball. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what he wants you to think. It's right there, hit it, and it's got such tight spin. And on the other side with Scherzer there's so many different ways he attacks you and that's the thing we've really seen him go fastball slider right now you saw the strikeout on the changeup to Dexter Fowler he hasn't even thrown that a lot yet. Scherzer with three K's early a walk a ground out to start this second inning. And Carpenter in an 0 2 hole. And a swing and a foul ball in and out of the glove of Suzuki. At bat continues for Carpenter. Ron, the Cardinals continue with Carpenter in the lineup. They had Harrison Bader playing center field the first two games with Edmund at third base. That plan was ditched, though, for Mike Schild because they want Carpenter's bat in there. Bader does come in for defensive purposes if the Cardinals have a lead late. But this is a team that got shut out yesterday. 
Second time they've been shut out in the postseason. In six games, they've been shut out twice. And yet the same team that scored 10 runs in the first inning against the Braves this past Wednesday. And that's exactly why the lineup's the same. I think this team just scored 10 runs two games ago. You don't go changing everything up. One and two the count. A weak ground ball. Zimmerman a race to the bag. And just seeing some awkward swings from both sides here to start this game. Two gone for Scherzer in the second. Tommy Edmond now. The two away in the second inning. Had a couple of hits in game five against the Braves. Had five hits in the division series. A versatile player who has made starts in the postseason at third base and right field. He's really the reason why Shield has the flexibility he does. He's turned himself into a pretty good outfielder, having not played the position till the last couple of seasons. I know it's common practice for hitters when they come to the bench, other hitters to ask them, well, you know, what was that pitch you swung at? Today, they're probably, I have no idea. No good, clue. Luck. <laughs> good luck. Good <laughs> luck. One ball, one strike. Well, Edmund made a name for himself quickly with the Cardinals. He gave him a real jolt offensively, and Mike Schilt was impressed with how he handled some of the best pitchers in the league. Against pitchers inside the top 10 in wins, Edmund hit 429. Top 10 in ERA, hit 385 against those pitchers. And the group of pitchers that were top 10 in the league in strikeouts, that would include Max Scherzer, he hit 478 mm. this year. That's how you get your name in the lineup. As Edmund takes a ball down and in, three and two the count. And you, you said it, BA, with his versatility, he's really given them a chance when a guy does get hot. They can move Edmund to another position yeah. for a little bit to keep that guy's bat in the lineup. Very athletic. Three two two outs and a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Fourth K for Scherzer. The Cardinals starting lineup in this series now 0 for 33 to start it. Pocket mortgage by quick Adam Wainwright last five home starts. Versus Washington. This is regular season numbers here. 5 0, a 185 ERA. Bunch of strikeouts. Has given up the two homers. And on the first pitch, Michael A. Taylor into left field. Ozuna's going back at the track. He is at the wall, and it is gone. Michael A. Taylor ambushing the first pitch from Wainwright. And the Nationals strike first. It's a third inning home run for Taylor. Taylor, who's playing center for Victor Robles while he's hurt, had a great NLDS rest away. And Dave Martinez sticking with him right now. He's had some huge hits right here. He got a hanging off speed pitch, and now they're dancing. <laughs> yeah, Mikey. Well, silencing this crowd here in St. Louis at Bush Stadium as Wainwright gives up the long ball to the number eight hitter. Cool. Wainwright was bitten by the home run ball this season. Gave up 22 this year. Michael A. Taylor on the first pitch pounces. Looked like a bad slider, a cutter to Taylor right in the middle of the plate. And we talked yesterday about he'll swing and miss a lot, but he's got tremendous power. Taylor hit 12 home runs during the regular season, but he spent a good part of the season in the minor leagues. And his has been an interesting story, a bit of a redemption story for Taylor, who was a big prospect and gets to the big leagues, expected to be the center fielder of the future. The Nationals have Victor Robles now, who's still down with a hamstring injury. Lauren can give you more on that a little later, but I mean, he's on the roster as Robles, but not quite ready. But I got the sense talking to David Martinez that he likes Taylor right now. He likes where he is. The fact that he's swinging the bat. Hitting some big home runs. Scherzer strikes out. Third K for Wainwright. 
when well, you said it, that's a guy he can get hot and quick and he can get in spurts and over a long season it's tough to put those numbers up when you're striking out as much but as you say Ron a lot in a sprint like this it's not a bad guy to have. Well, Taylor continues to get the starts remember he hit that big grand slam in the division series of 2017 against the Cubs. And the first pitch to Turner is in there for a strike. Let's check in with Lauren. She's got more on Victor Robles, his hamstring and his recovery and when we might see him. Yeah, he worked out yesterday. Brian Dave Martinez said he showed signs of progress. He said the beautiful and unfortunate thing about Victor in the scenario is that he doesn't know how to go 80%. It's just not in him. Michael A. Taylor, as you said, been filling in beautifully. Uh, you know, he is itching to get on the field. Brings a lot of energy. Gold Glove caliber outfielder. Taylor is an excellent defender in center field as well. So that has been a bit of a luxury for Dave Martinez. He's had Taylor reemerge now with Robles injured. And then a home run to put the Nats on the board. Broken bat from Eaton. Rolls to DeYoung. And Goldschmidt makes the play. Inning is over. Leadoff home run from Michael A. Taylor. The Nats up 1-0. Mobile is introducing its newest, most powerful signal ever. No signal goes further. No signal is more reliable. Whether you're home or away, T-Mobile is with you. Michael A. Taylor, his 11th home run of the season when you add it all together. There's the home run ball. Jumped on the first pitch. Taylor hit nine double-A homers this year, just one in the big leagues, and now has a postseason home run. Hit two homers. In the division series of 2017, that grand slam we mentioned also had a three run homer against the Chicago Cubs. And he has arrived in one of the few batters to get a good at bat in these shadows in this late afternoon start. One nothing Washington as we play in the bottom of the third. 
Bottom of the order coming up here is the young right off the end of the bat. That is going to roll foul. A lot of English on that batted ball. Scherzer with four strikeouts issued a four pitch walk to Colton Wong. It's been the only base runner thus far. Wong did steal second base. And Scherzer left him stranded there with a couple of strikeouts. And I don't care how good Adam Wainwright pitches at this point. Cardinals have to find a way to score some yeah. runs. Swing the bat. Goldschmidt, Azuna hitting 360. The rest of the team, 176. Mm -hmm. One ball, two strikes. And DeYoung takes a ball. Very interesting. Three breaking balls and a changeup to DeYoung when Annabelle Sanchez yesterday used the top of the strike zone to retire DeYoung. He's had trouble with that high fastball. Here two, it comes. Let's see. 2 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss. Didn't get it to the spot, but he got it to 97 and a strikeout to start the inning. And between innings, Lauren had a chance to visit with Dave Martinez, the net skipper. Fastball slider, even mixing in the change. How does Max look to you? It looks really good. Um, he settled in. You know, at first, he was trying to overamp again, and uh, but he's looking, he's looking really good. Hudson back in the bullpen. I heard you texted him a name suggestion. What would that be? Yeah, Annabella Sean. <laughs> As in Sanchez, Doolittle has a nice ring to it. Exactly, yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's great. It. That was the combo yesterday, the day that baby Hudson was born. Scherzer gets ahead of Wainwright. Both of these pitchers can swing the bat a little bit. Wainwright goes up the middle, slow roller, and Turner will make the play for out number two. Yeah, I think Dave Martinez can joke and laugh now. He was probably holding, holding it in a little bit last night in that two nothing game. But congratulations to Daniel Hudson, his wife, and their new baby, Adam yep. Ball Sean. <laughs> I'm not sure Mrs. Hudson's good with that. She, she might not like that name. <laughs> you can wear anything you want to today if you're Annabelle Sanchez. Yes. Yellow tint he's going with today. Right. Partial to those glasses. Back to the top of the order here is Dexter Fowler. You heard Dave Martinez talk about Scherzer being amped up. I mean, that was his biggest fear in every start, but especially coming into this start in his hometown. Scherzer growing up a Cardinal fan. He grew up about 20 miles from here and a little extra energy for a guy who doesn't need extra energy and I think that first inning he was raring to go at a four pitch walk but then settled down with a couple of strikeouts. You know it's been a unique year uh, for uh, Scherzer when you think about it he's been injured a lot usually he just gets on a roll and stays on one because he's such a consistent performer three times Cy Young Award winner will certainly be in the discussion this season. He made the all-star team once again seven consecutive years as an all-star and did not participate in that game. The back injury started to crop up in June. And a big swing by Fowler goes down to a knee. Now it's two and two. We saw him in the wild card game Ron, 97 98 right out. This is the pitch to me. The change up and slider when he's going good with that because everybody knows he's got the fastball. But when you have those two pitches to go with it, that's three plus pitches a hitter has to face. And Fowler waves and misses. No chance. Scherzer has the Cardinals on lockdown. Three up, three down. He's retired eight straight. Scherzer with six K's. Big boys are coming up for the Nats. Stadium, one of the greatest in the country. Downtown St. Louis. On the banks of the Mississippi River, the famous arch, the gateway to the west. And what a setting we have on a Saturday afternoon. Looks like another pitcher's duel in progress. Wainwright's given up a home run to Michael A. Taylor. Now he's got the heart of this Washington order. Anthony Rendon takes a strike. He'll be followed by Soto. And then Howie Kendrick. Wainwright gave up the home run to lead off the third inning, then retired the next three quickly. Pitch count in good shape as he enters the fourth inning. Let's give it up two hits. 
Three strikeouts for Wainwright has not walked a batter. Rendon had one of those two hits had a single in the first inning hit it sharply to left and takes a strike one and two the count. Thirty eight year old Adam Wainwright. Fourteen and nine this year at a sub four ERA. Turned thirty eight in August. Call it one of his best years since he was a twenty game winner. Five years ago back in 2014. He re-signed with the Cardinals this year on a one year deal. An incentive laden contract and he hit every marker on the incentives. Had a terrific season. Now he's talked about retirement a bunch but I'll tell you what after watching him and then LDS and now that's going to be tough. That was great against the Atlanta Braves and in that game Ron he just he had a a rhythm to him seven and two thirds scoreless he just looked in complete control against a very good hitting Atlanta Braves ball club. I think that's been one of his strengths in his career is that he's just a real kind of rhythm creative kind of personality and pitcher. So when he gets on those roles it's almost like he's a, a master painter or you know he's just trying to figure out different sequences that'll work. Ground ball over to Carpenter and Rendon is retired. Out number one. Mike Schilt had a moment with Lauren Shahadi between innings. Listen in. Mike, 13 runs in game five of the DS. Nothing sense. How do you attack Max? Yeah, right now we got to um, punch back a little bit more. He's on the attack right now, making a lot of good pitches. Um, I don't think the shadows are helpful. We won't make excuses, but, um, you know, he's going to all speed full counts and he's got a couple of different pitches working. They're good pitches. We just got to bear down and um, take a little more tough at bats. Are you guys used to the shadows at this time here? Is it still tough for them? Yeah, no, I mean, I think you get used to it, but still, you know, when a guy's dealing with that kind of stuff, with that kind of uh, late movement, it's still a little bit of a challenge, but we'll figure it out. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, and listening to him right there, guys, I know he's not going to make excuses. The Nats hitters, too, today, but it's tough when some of the biggest ABs of the year come in this kind of setting with the shadows. It's tough. Bright, sunny day. We had cloud cover yesterday. It rained a, a lot in the morning yesterday, and then was a very cold evening here in St. Louis. We thought shadows might come into play in game five with the Cardinals and the Braves. Remember, it was overcast. Uh, when that game began it's always something that hitters talk about discuss when you get into the postseason every now and then they're the late afternoon starts in the regular season but it's more consistent in the postseason. Wainwright's got Soto in a one two count shift is on three infielders on the right side Wainwright struck him out last time up and he's got him again. Defensive swing by Soto. He was just trying to foul that pitch off. Wainwright's punched him twice. Two up, two down for Adam Wainwright. Five in a row now. Just the fastball, and you're just seeing the swings by the, the hitters. They're just not uh, picking it up. And I think it's about another 15, 20 minutes. I think you're going to start seeing some better swings, Ron. You see, right now, Adams in the sun part. When that gets behind him, then everything's in the shade. It becomes a lot easier. Here is Howie Kendrick takes a ball. Kendrick rolled to short, hit it sharply, but bounced out his first time up. A 1 0 Washington lead on a Michael A. Taylor home run. Strikes again in the postseason does Michael A. Taylor. Jumped on Wainwright's first offering in the third. Made a great catch diving catch to end that division series. After Kendrick hit the grand slam. That's a good look at what the hitter sees that strobe effect or doesn't see or doesn't see. Yeah. <laughs> Well put from the Yale guy. You know, you think about these two pitchers. They both have over 2,000 innings, 300 starts, um, incredible competitors. And they just, they, they both have, like you feel their pitchers that are like one of the nine players on the field. Yeah, and you can see he's in and out of the shadows just on the mound himself. Two to the count. And Kendrick, he goes. A strikeout for Wainwright. 
Back to back K's in a 1 2 3 inning. 1 0 Nets. Redbirds coming up. Ain't seen nothing yet. It's a pretty good song right there. Appropriate for these two pitchers. And this Saturday afternoon start game two. Max Scherzer and Adam Wainwright. It is 1 0 Washington as Michael A. Taylor with a home run off Wainwright in the third. Scherzer allowed a first inning walk, the only base runner. It was to Colton Wong. It came on four pitches, and Wong has now seen six Max Scherzer pitches, none of them strikes. Maybe he gets a fastball finally to hit here, 2 0. Oh. No oh. spinner in there for a strike. Yeah, even at that, he knows what Wong can do on fastballs 380, second half of the season. Waffled him. Scherzer's retired eight straight, nine out of ten to start this game. Here's a 2 1 and a swing and a miss. Big cut by Wong. From 2-0 to 2-2 now. So far early in this game against left handed hitting Scherzer's liked his change up to put hitters away. Scherzer already with six strikeouts. Adam Wainwright coming off a three up three down fourth with two more K's. He's got five. Here's a two two to Wong and a ground ball diving stop Kendrick and he makes the play shift was on and it pays off well positioned nice play by Howie Kendrick for out number one. Took a lot of heat for his defense in the NLDS and comes up big, Frenchie, with a nice diving play. He did. Made two errors at first, one at second. But right here, save them from getting the lead off runner on with these two guys coming up. Last time we saw Goldschmidt swing at three sliders and strike out. Look for him to maybe change his sights to right center right here. Such a good hitter and try to stay on that pitch. Goldschmidt takes a strike. Oh. Paul Goldschmidt has the last Cardinal hit by a position player, a starting lineup position player, and it goes back to the fourth inning of game five in Atlanta. 18 consecutive scoreless innings now for the St. Louis Cardinals overall, but the one hit came from the pinch hitter, Jose Martinez. Cardinals have had 19 consecutive leadoff hitters retired as Wong bounces out 4 3 despite being in a 2 0 count getting ahead of Scherzer. One and two. Goldschmidt struck out in the first swung and missed three times in that at bat. And nice block back there by Suzuki just in case Goldschmidt offered. Two and, two now. and I'm watching in the outfield seeing Adam Eaton and Michael Taylor talking a lot to each other. If I remember right, this is about the same time Dexter Fowler lost to Kuna's ball mm. here, right? Yep. For the for the triple. triple. Here's a 2-2. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Scherzer's got another one. Two outs in the fourth. Seven strikeouts now. Hey, a reminder tonight, 8 Eastern, game one of the ALCS between the Yankees and the Astros. FS1 and ESPN Radio are the carriers. You can join us Monday night for game three of this NLCS. Coverage starts at 6.30 Eastern with a postseason pregame show presented by the unexpected energy of ExxonMobil. First pitch at 7.38, game three from D.C. on Monday. These two teams will take tomorrow off for a travel day. Scherzer fires a fastball strike on the inside corner to Ozuna. Scherzer with seven K's already. His postseason high is 13 strikeouts in his career. He did that 
as a member of the Tigers back in 2013 ALCS against Boston. It is tough to see right now Ron but this the thing Scherzer's doing too when he misses right now he's missing down this he's down. not missing up giving them a chance to elevate it. One ball one strike. Two on one now on Ozuna. Ian Goldschmidt had been the hot hitters of this postseason. Ozuna had four consecutive games with two hits to start his postseason career then had a hit in game five. Nine hits first five games all against the Atlanta Braves some big RBIs had a multi homer game two homer game here at Bush Stadium. It seems that every time that Max Scherzer has got behind an account he's gone soft instead of amped up now he's stuck in a fastball situation. Let's see if he goes with one. Three balls and a strike hitters count for Ozuna. And a swing and a pop up. Middle of the infield. Rendon makes the call. He's got it on the mound. That's the inning. One, two, three. The Cardinals go in order. Max Scherzer dialed in as we head to the fifth. TBS is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by T Mobile, introducing its newest, most powerful signal ever. Whether you're home or away, T Mobile is with you. Well, we saw a great pitching performance yesterday from both sides really and we've got another one here today in game two of this NLCS Adam Wainwright Max Scherzer it's one nothing Washington on a Michael A. Taylor homer that led off the third that part of the order is coming up Zimmerman Suzuki and Taylor if anybody reaches Scherzer will bat here in the Washington fifth. Zimmerman grounded out his last time up hit a bullet on one hop to Colton Wong who picked it and threw him out. You know I've been in Wainwright's position many many times this is a position where you say to yourself I can't give up any more mm -hmm. runs it's got to keep it one nothing. Yeah, you got to find a way it's tough it doesn't seem like your offense is going to click but you got to believe at some point someone's yep. going to be able to break through but as you said got to keep them right here. Well we've seen that from the Cardinals this year and in this postseason their game one win against the Atlanta Braves they scored six of their seven runs in the last two innings of that game. Here's a one two Zimmerman lays off. Wainwright at six seven looks like he's throwing it from the top of the arch <laughs> with that big breaking ball. Terrific athlete. Been a gold glove award winner multiple gold gloves good hitter fully connected to the game in every way a swing and a miss Wainwright picks up another strikeout Zimmerman's gone and strikeout number six for Adam Wainwright that's three strikeouts now of his strikeouts that have come on the curveball and he stayed consistently with that three straight curveballs in a row to Zimmerman just disappears. That knuckle curve spiked mm -hmm. curve just he gets that spin that it's sort of if you ever watched a good bowler when they roll the bowling ball it stays straight for about half the lane mm -hmm. and then takes that left turn that's what his curveball is like. First ball swinging Suzuki tough Sunfield out there in center Fowler has got his glove up and makes a play that was well done by Fowler not as routine as you would think two outs in the inning and here comes Michael A. Taylor. Statcast AI powered by AWS. Michael A. Taylor, first pitch he saw in the third inning. Launches it out of here. 106 plus off the bat and a 39 degree launch angle. That is way up there. Major League average launch angle 28. And Taylor hang with time. the shades on. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was in the air a long time. And really, it's the one mistake. If you go back, it was a little cutter that kind of backed up on him. One mistake he made. How about that? Postseason homers. Michael A. Taylor hit his third with that home run in the third. His other two coming in 17. On the ground, tough play. Jump throw to Young Taylor. Too fast. He'll beat it out. Boy, that number eight spot in the Washington batting order with Gomes yesterday and now Taylor today. That's four hits now for the number eight hitters in the Nationals order. 
including two homers. Good play by the young right there. Just yeah. never going to throw out Michael Taylor there. And I'll tell you what, it's another big play in the fact that you're able to clear the pitcher now. Yeah. I know Max can still get a hit, but at the same time, if he doesn't, you bring top of the order in the sixth. Two RBIs, I beg your pardon, not two homers, but two RBIs from Gomes and Taylor combined, hitting in front of that pitcher. And now Scherzer, Wainwright checks on Taylor. Unlikely to be running in a spot like this. Pitcher up, you want to clear the pitcher, so you stay there. You also have Yadier Molina behind the plate. Too well, many factors to run. And think about this, too. Wainwright hasn't been in the stretch much. I mean, he did give up a hit in the first inning. Face one batter with a runner on base in that first inning. Taylor's home run in the third, and it's only the second time he's had a runner on base while he's been on the mound. Nationals, a big stolen base team throughout the regular season. They do not have a stolen base attempt in this postseason. Certainly wouldn't do it with Scherzer at the plate as he bounces to short. And Young will make the play to end the inning. So an infield hit by Taylor. He's two for two. Nats have three hits and a run on the board. Molina will start it. Then for your favorite teams, video, pitch tracking, much more. Download MLB at bat today. Cardinals need a little inspiration from the legend of Stan Musial, Stanley F. Musial, swing and stand the man. Statue out in front. Popular see meeting a, place. See if he can get a pinch hit today. Oh, man, he was what a player, right? Three-time MVP, Stan Musial, 22 years in the majors, Cardinal legend. Miss Stan Musial being around. Passed away in 2013. Molina, fly ball into shallow right. Kendrick will give way to Eaton, and there is out number one. 19 consecutive scoreless innings for the Cardinals. Their record in the postseason is 21. That was the 1930 Cardinals in the World Series. And right here, guys, you're starting to see the frustration right there. No one he got a fastball to hit right here. Nothing's going your way. Boom. Mm. Yep. I get it. Scherzer fires to Carpenter. A fastball misses. One base runner today for St. Louis. Max Scherzer has thrown only nine pitches out of the stretch. Mentioned Wainwright not pitching out of the stretch much either. Despite giving up the three hits, he has just ten pitches out of the stretch. A Colton Wong walk in the first inning. The only base runner against Scherzer as Carpenter takes a ball. Now it's 3 0. Oh. You got to let him swing 3 0. Oh. I'm the same way. You have to. A guy like Carpenter with that kind of power, if he can get a fastball in the zone right here, he's got to try to launch. Some guys do it, some guys don't. Carpenter does. Takes a strike right down the middle with a fastball. Carpenter had career lows in batting average and OPS this year. Lost his everyday job, but is back in there in this postseason. As Schilt moves Edmund out to right field. There's a breaking ball strike, big slinging curve. And that's a tough thing. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't like to swing 3-0, but now you're 3-1. You get this pitch right here, which you're definitely not looking for. Now you're 3-2. You got the ability to see all three pitches right here. Carpenter hit 36 homers last year. Here's the 3 2, and that's a called strike three. 97 mile an hour gas from Scherzer. We put it in that Hall of Fame spot right on the corner at the knees. Strikeout number eight. Both pitches the 3 1 slider and the fastball 3 2. Pow. Hall of Fame pitches. Can't do it any better than that. That's where Scherzer's headed when his career is over. Three times Cy Young Award winner, two of those as a member of the Nationals. First year with Washington was 2015. Diamondbacks, Tigers, Nationals as Tommy Edmond takes a strike.
No balls and a strike. Edmund fouls this one away. Let's check in with Lauren Shahadi. Yeah, well, Tommy, Edmund should be a married man already. B.A. is wedding is scheduled for October 5th. It had to be moved when he was added to the 40 men. His fiance picked the date originally because the minor league season would have been over. They moved it to after the World Series just in case. Just think, Jeff, you could have officiated it. <laughs> I now pronounce you. Well, they'll make it up. There's a cold strike three. Max Scherzer puffing and puffing off the mound. Back to back K's. Boo Birds out here in St. Louis. That's who their matchup today with Scherzer and Wainwright. They have been excellent. Scherzer has been dominant. One run allowed by Wainwright, the home run by Michael A. Taylor. Max Scherzer with five no hit innings with nine strikeouts. Wainwright's given up three hits. And he has six punch outs as we go to the sixth inning. Ali Ball Sanchez run yesterday, seven and two third shutout, but seven and two third no hit innings as well. The heralded hurlers today. The only thing you look at that jumps out at me for Max is the 78 pitches through five innings. Strike to Turner. Sanchez yesterday was very economical in his pitches, could have easily finished the game. He wasn't taken out because of pitch count. He was taken out because the tying run was coming to the plate. Sean Doolittle, a four out save yesterday. Turner in the air right center. That's going to get down. Over to cut it off is Edmund. Turner with a big turn and will stop. Nicely done by Tommy Edmund. Cuts it off, holds the speedy Turner to a single, but it's a leadoff hit for Washington. And that's the only reason he stopped right there because Edmund came, charged the ball hard right here because Turner was thinking double the whole way out of the box right here. But it is on here for Wainwright because with Turner on and his great speed, even with Molina behind the plate, this is a place with Adam Eaton up. Adam Eaton up, you can play some small ball maybe, but but for the Nationals, we've seen him bunt twice in the NLDS with Turner at first base too. Eaton is 0 for two. Wainwright fields his position well off the mound. Carpenter crashing in from third, and Eaton shows bunt, takes a strike. Yesterday the Nationals scored first in the second inning had an add on run in the seventh on the Howie Kendrick RBI single with two outs. That's all they would need a two nothing win. You go through the regular season and watching this incredible home run explosion the last few years. I mean a one nothing game you dismiss a two nothing game yeah. you hardly think about as an insurmountable lead but it has the feel of this kind of game that another run would be extremely valuable for the Nationals put even more pressure on St. Louis as he mm. bunts right through it didn't even make contact and it's 0 and 2. Eaton has put himself in a difficult situation now. He can't get Turner over. Turner's going to have to try to steal that bag. Wainwright, unlike Scherzer, is outstanding at holding runners at first base. Only one stolen base allowed in his postseason career of 100 innings. And with this being the sixth inning, third time through the lineup, I think it's more important for Adam here to keep Turner at first base. Turner had 35 steals during the regular season. Stays put. Eaton takes a ball. That was almost like a pitch out. Casey decided to go because if you're Turner there's a couple of things you're trying to do here trying to steal the base but you're also trying to predict a curveball from Wayne Wright and running on that pitch as opposed to the fastball. Turner finished second to Ronald Acuna in steals this year two behind him he's leaning he stays put and Eaton takes a call strike three and he knew it just started walking to the dugout. Got caught guessing perhaps and Eaton is a strikeout victim number seven for Wainwright first out of the sixth. Eaton is such a good bunter when he didn't get the bunt down he just lost the at bat. I think between that he's thinking curveball but as you said with him being a fast runner at first Wainwright stuck with the fastball to give Yachty a chance if he did go. And now it's Rendon with a runner at first. And a single in the first inning. First hit of the game, and then he grounded out to third his last time up. Rendon takes a strike.
Remember with Rendon, he is a line to line hitter. T Mobile extended coverage. Up in the left corner, Turner reaching on a single to start the inning. Not much of a lead there for Turner. Rendon and Turner really swinging the bat well this postseason. Turner and Rendon each had a hit yesterday. Both have a hit today. They each have nine apiece. In the seven games played in this postseason for Washington. Rendon right off the end of the bat, a foul ball. A big curveball from Wainwright. Wainwright with the curveball, Ron, he he changes speeds on it, different tilts on it. He throws it the same way, but it can come at you in a lot of different ways. Yes, it can, and, and that's why it's always been his best pitch in his arsenal. But this is the most difficult thing in this inning for Wainwright. He's got a hold turner. He's got to decide what pitch he's going to throw. He's got to execute it against a guy that only had 126 RBI this year. Led the National League in that category. Oh, and to the count. Turner at first, stage put, and Rendon takes a call, strike three. High strike. Rendon barking on his way out. Wainwright gets the call. Back to back, backwards K's for Wainwright. And he pitched Rendon backwards in that at bat. If you watch the pitch sequence, a curveball for a strike, a curveball just off the plate. And then came back with the fastball, which I thought was a little up, but he got a call, got the call from Chris Conroy. Now Molina stuck the landing, made it look good, and Rendon strikes out. Here is Juan Soto now. Let's see how he tracks the baseball. He's uh, kind of toned down his takes against Adam Wainwright. Don't know if it's as he swings and misses here. Not sure if it's the respect of Wainwright or after yesterday. There's a little bit of discussion between Soto and Miles Michaelis. And maybe just not wanting to make that an issue here the rest of the series. Yeah, I, I don't know. We haven't seen it for three at bats today. Obviously, swung at that one, but the other two at bats, he didn't look at Wainwright. He didn't stare him down. Turner still at first base and a swing and a miss. I'd, I'd personally be very careful if I were the Nationals taking that away from Soto. Well, would, Soto shouldn't take it away from himself. I it's agree. part of his game. I'm with you. And right now, Adam Wainwright has just got him all out of whack with this curveball. We saw all the off-speed pitches he got last night. Today, already a bunch of them, two strikeouts. Now he's got him 0-2. Look at that face. Game face. Lead-off single. Back-to-back -back Ks. He's got Soto 0-2. Throw to second. Doesn't matter. They call it a strikeout on the appeal. A strikeout of Soto to end the inning. Still a taco, Taco Bell. Boy, we are witnessing something special. First two games of this NLCS. First Anibal Sanchez. Now Max Scherzer. He's got five no hit innings. He has nine strikeouts as he faces Paul DeYoung on the first pitch. He pops it up. Trey Turner is under it and makes the play for out number one. Let's go back to the end of the last inning with Wainwright on the mound. Soto clearly swinging. Turner would have been safe. But home plate umpire Chris Conroy on the appeal gets the call from the third base umpire Chad Fairchild and that's how the inning ended. And what a great sequence by Wayne right there. Two big curveballs and you go right where that curveball comes out of his hand but with a fastball yeah. at 90. Three strikeouts for Soto today. Here is Adam Wainwright. So Adam Wainwright in his career is 0 for 21 at the plate in the postseason. He won the Silver Slugger Award just a couple of years ago. He hit over 260 that year. Well, he's got 10 home runs and 71 RBI in his career. And a big swing and a miss. This is incredible connection between 
Anibal Sanchez and Max Scherzer doing it again. 2013 ALCS. Those two each had five no hit innings, five or more. Sanchez had six. That was while well, both were pitching for the Tigers yeah. against the Boston Red Sox. And they're doing it again six years later for the Washington so. Nationals. One and two the count. And Wayne Wright took a big rip, but he strikes out number 10 for Max Scherzer. Two outs in the sixth inning. Authentic on field caps, tees, jerseys, hoodies, and more. You can get all your League Championship Series gear. Suit up with your team at the official source, MLBShop.com. Top of the order, third time around. Dexter Fowler, who has struck out twice against Scherzer. Two times around for the Cardinals starting lineup today means they are now 0 for 44 in the first two games of this series. 0 for 44 from the starters. Pinch hitter Jose Martinez, the only hit in this series. And right here is a leadoff guy, Dexter Fowler. I know he's got big time pull power, but here you almost like to see him try to shoot the ball to left field. Mm -hmm. Look what the infielders are playing. Trey Turner's almost at second base. You got that whole side. Someone's got to try to get on base here with a base hit. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Fowler had a good cut, was on it, but fouls it back. And now it's one and two. No runs last 20 innings. One run, a uh, one inning shy of their longest streak in a single postseason, 1930 Cardinals in the World Series with the Philadelphia A's that year. Just one hit in the last 19, just five base runners. Here's a one two pitch. No, with two outs, but you knew coming into this game that. Fowler and Wong had to play a big role because it's hard to put three or four hits. Now they haven't put any hits up against Max, but it's hard to put three or four hits together against him. So speed and stealing bases against Suzuki was going to be a big part. Has not played any part yet. Can't get on. Two and two the count. Here comes Scherzer and down it in. Count goes full now. Scherzer has only faced two batters from the stretch after that walk to Colton Wong in the first inning. Wainwright is pitching a gym himself. Six innings. Only four hits allowed. One run, the Taylor Homer. Here's a 3 2. And a change up out in front. I think every 3 2 count we've seen today has been either a change up or slider yes, from Max. Against the left handers. Yep. Struck out Fowler in his last at bat on a fastball up and away. Suzuki head down. Fastball call. This will be pitch number 90 for Scherzer in the sixth inning. And that gets by, and Fowler will reach. And the Cardinals have a base runner for the first time since the first inning. And the speedy Dexter Fowler is on with two outs. In my opinion, you got to steal the base in the first two pitches. Got to go. Have to. I was about to say, Wong, right here, you give him a pitch or two. I think you got to take that chance. To get to second, because then a base hit scores you with his speed. Tying run at first base. Base hit scores you, but a base hit has been the problem for the Cardinals. They don't have it, and that's a foul ball. Strike one on Colton Wong. Nationals haven't played huge shifts. These last two guys, these two at bats, they are playing way over. Trey, Trey Turner, like I said, almost at second base. Mm. Little half swing, bouncing ball to Rendon. 
And Wong is out. Scherzer keeps it going. He does walk a batter in the sixth inning. He's got two walks, but no hits through six. Powered by AWS, the hissing curveball <laughs> of Adam Wainwright. It's been hissing all day. Some of these curveballs. I mean, looking at the player average for Wainwright this year, and he's had a couple that have been above his average and way above his average at time. He has had a great curve. He starts Howie Kendrick with a fastball. And on the first pitch, Adam Wainwright has one out, doing all he can to try to keep this heavy hitting Nationals ball club to one run. You know, I, I think we haven't spent enough time talking about how good Michaelis and how good Wainwright have been in these first two starts, but they're going up against two pitchers that have had no nos. Now, Miles Michaelis was excellent yesterday. Michaelis, six innings, one run. He struck out seven. Six and a third for Wainwright today. Michael A. Taylor leadoff home run in the third is the only run. Nine punch outs for Wainwright. And Zimmerman on the first pitch, a high towering fly ball. Fowler shading his eyes. He's got a beat on it, makes the play for out number two. Sunglasses on top of his hat. You know, Frenchie Zimmerman missed that one. That's a hanger right there. That's the one you want. And you see his eyes got big and he just he knew it. <laughs> just got it. Just got under it. And nope. that's why you hear a lot of people in outfield sometimes, I, you know, like you see his glasses on top of yeah. his head. Why doesn't he have them? Sometimes it doesn't really matter in certain situations. A lot of times you wear those glasses if it's really, really bright. But if the sun's there and it's going in and out, even if the ball gets in the sun with glasses, you're not going to see anything. Right. It's a glove really more than anything else, well, right? To shade you, your you eyes. You trust your eyes. Right. You want your eyes as much as you can without glasses. No, I get that. I've. I've talked to a lot of outfielders too, you know, because we, <laughs> as announcers, we're all well. I mean, it's a good spot for your sunglasses, yeah, on well. top of your hat. But it does make sense, because the harsh contrast. Edmund wearing glasses, Ozuna is not. Suzuki, look who oh. lost the bat, threw it right over the head of Taylor. Helicopters that bat right <laughs> over his teammate. A foul bat, and it's 0-2. Looks like he's got to get a new one. Might have broke that on the on the javelin throw. Probably broke it on the brick when it went over his head. <laughs> That's right. right there behind Shipped him. It. Absolutely. Look out. <laughs> yeah, it hit the top of the brick right there. I mean, Taylor ducked, but it, that bat was by him when he ducked, so. <laughs> oh, and to the count. Two out, seventh inning. Wainwright lets it fire, and that one's in the dirt. Stopped by Molina. What are you seeing from Suzuki's at bats coming after that hit by pitch in game five? I mean, tough to tell, I guess, today, but do you think he's hanging in there like normal? Yeah, I do. But listen, Kurt struggled in the NLDS. He did a great job calling games, keeping those pitchers in, but he didn't get a hit in the NLDS. So he has been a little rusty at the plate, but. He's also they'd love for him to hit but he's back there calling a great game right now for Max. Had a strong offensive season did Suzuki he's down though he's a strikeout victim big curveball from Wainwright three up three down ten strikeouts for Adam Wainwright Scherzer back on the mound in a one nothing game. A thousand people here and Max Scherzer the man from Chesterfield has a no hitter through six innings Goldschmidt Ozuna Molina coming up heart of the St. Louis batting order Scherzer has struck out Goldschmidt twice has made very little contact today Goldschmidt's two for twenty seven against Max in his career now with sixteen punch outs and what happens is that slider for Max threw him three the first at back I'm swing now he's a little late on the fastball probably thinking slider a little bit in his mind. One ball, one strike. Goldschmidt in the air left field. It's a hot one. It's down. Base hit. Soto played it back. And Goldschmidt breaks up the no hitter. A line shot single by Paul Goldschmidt to start the seventh inning. He finally got the hanger right here. 0 2 pitch. Yep. 
backed up on a little bit. And hey, right here, you watch Soto was in between. He got lucky right here after he decided to stop and play it on the bounce. That ball almost mm. snuck by him. Almost any outfielder you see in a game like this would always be aggressive and try to catch that baseball, even despite the one nothing game. So the Cardinals with their first hit by a starter in this series. Goldschmidt the single now Ozuna and a big swing and a miss. Boy, he had some bad intentions with that swing. <laughs> and that's Goldie starting it off right there. And like you said Soto I thought he could have possibly caught this if he kept coming but you can look at the other way and say if he, if he came and dove mm -hmm. Goldschmidt's on mm -hmm. third right now instead of first. Maybe if it's four nothing five nothing you take that chance at a one nothing game he holds back. Well, we've documented that really no one else in this lineup has hit other than that game five series. But this is maybe their best chance. A base hit by Goldschmidt. Maybe upper tank by Ozuna. Ozuna had two home runs in a game here at Bush Stadium in the division series. He's 0 for 2 against Scherzer. Strikeout and a pop up. No balls, two strikes, and a lob over to first just to keep Goldschmidt honest. Goldschmidt will run yeah. as well. He's a big guy, but he has some speed. Cardinals trying to take advantage of every base they achieve, trying to add one, maybe two to it with a stolen base. Could do it against Suzuki. Two strike pitch, and Ozuna trying to go to right field, fouls it away. Scherzer turning it up a notch right now. Well, he starts to see he's at 98. He gave up the hit. He knows he's not staying in this mm -hmm. thing for the duration now. So, as a lot of horses do, the Verlanders, those guys like that, they start to pump it up to 98 here in this inning. Another 0 2. And Osuna strikes out. Scherzer picks up number 11. On the way here in the seventh inning. Let's check in with Lauren. Yeah, you guys talking about Max dialing it up. What he says he cares most about are his last 15 pitches. It's a mindset he has about his last inning. It's not 15 pitches exactly, but what he thrives off of is the adrenaline boost he gets from giving everything he has, emptying the tank. It's almost what he wants to be defined as as a pitcher in the most competitive inning, in his opinion, he brought it until the last pitch. All right, Lord, thanks. Good stuff. He is certainly ramping it up here. Now that he's given up a hit, and a timeout is asked for and granted. Nadia Molina asks for a time. 0 for 2 here today is Molina. Fernando Rodney beginning to get loose. Molina swing and a miss. And what happens too a little bit in these situations, even with Azuna, Molina, such a veteran guy, you get the feeling some of these guys start to try too hard. There's nothing going on. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to get that big hit right. to get things going. Just keep the line moving. Absolutely. It's a record setting drought for the Cardinals. 21 consecutive scoreless innings. But a runner at first now, the tying run. Molina on the ground, got a chance to turn it here. Turner to Kendrick. The pivot in time to first and a double play. No hitter is lost, but the shutout intact. One nothing through seven. We oh. Michael A. Taylor with a solo home run, and that is the only tally on the board. Taylor with his third career postseason home run, his first since 2017. And there's a lot to unpack here as we start this eighth inning. First, Michael A. Taylor is going to lead off. Max Scherzer has not moved on deck. And there is activity in the Nationals' bullpen. That would lead you to believe Scherzer is out. Sean Doolittle, who closed the game yesterday, a four-out save last night. He is loosening intently in the pen. Carpenter, Edmund DeYoung do up for the Cardinals in the bottom of the eighth. You figure that would be the window for Doolittle, at least the first two hitters. A one nothing game here in game two. Two nothing win yesterday for Washington. And only one hit allowed by the Nationals pitchers.
Taylor a wave and a miss. The former Cardinal Matt Adams has moved on deck. Had some big postseason moments for the Cardinals. He did. I, you know, I think we all expect to maybe Scherzer to try to go out for one more, but I think we also forget that NLDS game four. He he said it after the game. I was done. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. He threw about 110, 112 pitches, I think, too. And Doolittle was effective last night. Pitched great. Now with Hudson back, mm -hmm. you you have your eight nine innings set up for you. But if you're the St. Louis Cardinals. You can't wait to get into the Nationals bullpen. Anybody but Scherzer is Taylor on about face. Wainwright now has a new career high in postseason strikeouts. That's his 11th. And one away here in the eighth. And Matt Adams gets a nice hand as he is introduced. 15 innings in the post for Wainwright. He's given up one run. I was going to say, if you're the Nats, you're ready for him to get out of the game, too. That's right. See Mike Maddox on the phone, the pitching coach. And there will be some activity now in the Cardinal pen. Wainwright ran out of gas in game three against the Braves. Adams on the first pitch, sends one deep into right center field. Edmonds on the run, and he can't get it. At the base of the wall, Edmund with a strong throw in. He missed the mark, but he chases Adams back to first base with a long single. Pinch hit single. By Matt Adams. And now it's Andrew Miller in the St. Louis bullpen. What a job by Edmund in the outfield right here, getting to this ball and keeping Matt Adams at first base. He jumped on one right here off the bottom. Of the wall and threw a great strike back in forced Adams to go back to first. Scherzer fired up slapping hands. Matt Adams with his first base hit in this postseason. Maddox having a chat here with Adam Wainwright got the whole squad out there buying a little time certainly for Andrew Miller but Wainwright will face Trey Turner. You figure Miller is ready for Eaton who's due next. The lefty Miller's ready for Eaton. I'm surprised a little and it might be because of the injuries that no one's running for Adams when you could use the big run. That's a good call. Victor Robles has the hamstring injury. Dave Martinez said he'd only use him to pinch hit not run. How about power. Yeah I was going to say that that would be the guy you're not going to use Cabrera. He's your uh, switch hit and pinch hitter but I'm surprised too. And a swing and a miss Turner. Oftentimes you'll see managers not burn that extra player on the bench until the runner gets in scoring position. Mm -hmm. That could be in play for Martinez. And he does have a lead. Adams held to a long single. No balls and a strike. Turner takes a strike. Oh. Going to the count. If he gets Turner right here, do you think he lets him face Eaton? Or we saw him run out of gas. And Schilt left him in maybe one or two hitters too long against the Braves. I think he might leave him in for Eaton if he gets the out here. Even though the lefty lefty matchup with Miller might be better. Well you know that's a conversation in that Cardinal yeah. dugout. Here's the 0 2 and Turner. With an opposite field swing fouls it away. Turner is a dangerous at bat in a spot like this. He's a guy that can jump you in a hurry. Hit 19 home runs during the regular season. Slow runner at first. No balls, two strikes. And the curve in the air. Center field, long run. Fowler can't get there. And Adams will go to second base. A little flare single by Trey Turner. And suddenly two on with one away and decision time for Mike Schilt. I'm definitely a little surprised now they're not pinch running for Adams with a chance right here. And it's not Adams fault. I mean the guy can rake but right here they would have had a chance to have first and third, third. right here if Parra was out there. So 
So Miller seems to be up for Rendon, even though it would be a lefty righty matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. It's going to stay with Wainwright. By the way, the Nats carry six on their bench. Adams takes him down to five. Robles not available to run. So you got Dozier, Gomes, your backup catcher. You wouldn't use him. Dozier, Cabrera, and Para would be the options. But they're going to let it ride with Adams at second base. One ball, no strikes. Tough guy to double up here at Eaton. And a wave and a miss way out in front. You know, Brian Dozier would be out. He doesn't have a lot of speed. Gomes is your backup catcher. Cabrera, your pinch hitter. Robles has got the bad hammy. Power is the only yeah. one you could use. So when you just start breaking it down, it's it's really it's a six-man bench, five after the pinch hit, but just one guy. And, and it also might tell you that Robles' hamstrings hurt a little yeah. more than we think, with Parr being the backup outfielder too at that point. Here's a one-one. Two balls and a strike. Crowd wanted it. Remember, it was Eaton's big hit yesterday that gave the insurance run. Led off with that, then lead off with hit, hit that triple and scored a second run. Driven in by Howie Kendrick with two outs in the seventh yesterday. A strike. Didn't like that call. Two and two now. That what a gutsy performance. Did you expect you get, anything you less than Wayne, right? You get lost in the game, right? We're in the eighth inning. He's 38 years of age. And his two postseason starts, he's pitched into the eighth. Absolute horse again is Adam Wainwright. One away, two and two the count, two on. And a foul ball. Tried to check his swing. That was a good choice. He was trying to throw that fastball that comes back over. Stayed true and caught Eaton on the label. Does he have one more big curveball in him? One more big one. Giovanni Gallegos is the right hander of the bullpen. Rendon do next. Let's see what Wainwright does here. And Molina asked for timeout. He wants to start over. I mean, that little quick interaction between those two is all you need to know mm -hmm. about Molina and Wainwright. The num the pitches, the sequencing, the signals with the runner at second. Look at Molina. Doesn't even put a sign down. Here's the 2 2. Mm -hmm. And that one just missed. Spins Eaton out of there. <laughs> Suzuki saying curveball. That's what you'd expect from Wainwright on this 3 2 pitch. I'm guessing a guy like Max when he pitches it takes him a while to come down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at him. He looks like he's ready to tackle somebody. And 11 K's two off his postseason high. Wainwright has set a postseason mark in strikeouts. He has 11 as well. Full count and Eaton on the ground that is past Goldschmidt down into the corner hits off the side wall. Adams will score. Here comes Turner. Throw comes to the plate, and Turner is in. Adam Eaton drives in a pair with a double. Makes it 3 0 Washington in the eighth inning. A two strike double just inside the bag. And Adam Eaton delivers again. On that curveball, just enough right there. What a battle by Eaton and Wainwright. Got the ground ball just perfectly placed by Eden. Big runs for the Washington Nationals. Baby shark. Little shark bite. And Rendon's going to be intentionally walked. Now that's going to bring Soto to the plate, and that probably means a pitching change. Yep. Mike Schilt. At the top step, Miller's going to get a lot of at bats with Soto up there, a lot of matchups. And the end of the line for Adam Wainwright. 3 0, he will exit. Still a runner, his responsibility. Back to back starts in the postseason, pitching into the eighth inning. 
And listen to this crowd as one of their best walks off. Insurance for all of us. Andrew Miller, instead of an ad bat against Adam Eaton, he will get a matchup here with Juan Soto coming up. Struck out Soto yesterday, just threw him all sliders. We saw Shilton Maddox talking before Eaton came up. And, and you wonder if, I know hindsight's 20 20, yeah. but to bring Miller in to face Eaton, Wainwright. You know, they, what, 117 pitches five, six days ago? Two on now after the intentional walk to Rendon. I mean, the Nats have two lefties in their batting order, Eaton and Soto, hitting second and fourth with Rendon in between. And that's the challenge that Washington puts on you by splitting those lefties. They force those decisions. And Wainwright gave him all he had. But he exits this game down three nothing. And the crowd obviously you saw when he was walking away gave him a lot of appreciation and. He's a warrior gladiator. Yep. It was just fair Eden down that line. Two on one out and Soto pops it up a mile high. A few steps in the outfield grass infield fly rule is the call. Soto is retired. Miller gets him again. Time now for our T-Mobile 4D replay as Adam Eaton finds one to hang in the zone and just inside the bag. Yeah, they're dancing in that dugout. Washington Nationals, they, they're the oldest team, average age, <laughs> oldest team in the league. But they've brought a lot of fun, a lot of smiles to the picture. What a performance they are putting on both on the mound and at the plate. A team that added on late in those elimination games. And they're doing it now in game two with a chance to put their foot on the Cardinals going back home. Kendrick takes a strike. Yes, yesterday in a similar situation. John Brebbia was brought into the game after Miller retired Soto. To face Kendrick. Staying with Miller today. Howie Kendrick four for eight with runners in scoring position in the postseason including an RBI yesterday came with two outs Gallegos has stopped throwing for the moment this is a backbreaker moment for Howie Kendrick he delivers here I mean three nothing is tough enough especially the way the Cardinals have been hitting you can bet Kendrick knows he's got a chance to put this thing away. Two outs in the eighth. Miller misses inside. One and two the count. Sometimes the at-bats against Howie Kendrick start with two strikes. He's such a good two-strike hitter. Well, with his approach and his willingness to wait on the ball and go the other way, doesn't chase outside the zone too often. Hit 297 this year with two strikes. Had led the big leagues. Here's a one-two. Did he go? He did not. Checks his swing. Crew chief over there, Bill Miller, with the call. Boy, that slider of his is really coming to that back foot. Almost looked like it was going to look. Almost hit him in the leg. He's got a better one today than he did yesterday. Absolutely. Maybe that's why he left him in to face Kendrick. A little different look for him. Two on, two out. Two to the count. Miller deals. Kendrick pulls it foul. This is where the Nationals thrive this year. No team in the National League had more RBIs this season with two outs than Dave Martinez squad. Sean Doolittle now has been up for about 20 minutes. He's thrown a half a game down there. And remember he was efficient yesterday but got four outs. It was an up down for Doolittle. Got the final out of the eighth and then three up three down of the ninth. 2-2 two, two again. Two on. Here it comes. And Miller misses away. Three balls, two strikes. 
Good try by him right there, though, to go back to yeah. where everything had been in, in, in. Just too far off the plate. If you don't get it enough in, and you saw it in Los Angeles, he can inside out anything. Howie Kendrick. Two big runs scoring for Washington on Eaton's two RBI double. Runners go and a swing and a miss. Kendrick strikes out. Miller got him. Damage done though. Adam Eaton delivers late. Three nothing Washington. Cardinals coming to bat. Great pitching. Excellent defense, timely hitting. Nationals have a 3-0 lead. Brian Dozier will enter to play second base. Kendrick is out. Looks like a double switch. Sean Doolittle comes in. Those are his numbers on the year. Four out save in last night's game. And has the left-hander Carpenter to start it. It is Tommy Edmond who will follow a switch hitter. You'd rather hit right-handed, although he's good from both sides. This is the window in the lineup for Doolittle. Today he was the closer yesterday Dave Martinez said I am uncomfortable rolling him out there for multiple innings today mm. especially now that Daniel Hudson has returned 15 pitches last night for Doolittle and he deals a strike to Carpenter it's 0 and 2 is that the slider you're telling me he was using in Los Angeles there's a slider and yep. I'm telling you just sprinkling that in talking to Dave Martinez today we said he threw four changeups last night he said we talked to him a lot after he came back from hurting his knee and said you got to sprinkle it in. Fastball up. No balls two strikes. Matt Carpenter. And missed with the fastball. Three nothing Washington. They just get two runs on an Eaton double. Those runs belong to Wainwright. He goes seven and a third here today. Allowing three runs. He pitched a gem but Scherzer on his game and the Cardinals are not hitting. Just one hit today. They've had two hits in the series. Well Scherzer and Wainwright with 11 strikeouts. It's just the second postseason game ever with both starters striking out 11 or more. Clayton Kershaw and Jacob deGrom did it back in the 2015 NLDS. That late afternoon start in the shadows had a lot to do with it. 2 2 pitch and a swing and a miss. Doolittle has retired five straight in this NLCS. He gets his first man tonight. Carpenter is gone out number one of the eighth. 8 p.m. Eastern tonight, game one ALCS. Yankees Astros on Fox and ESPN Radio. Monday night, game three of the NLCS. Coverage starts at 6 30. Postseason pregame show presented by the unexpected energy of Exxon Mobil. First pitch at 738 from Nationals Park. And the Nats. Five outs away from a commanding 2-0 lead going back to their home ballpark with Strasburg and Corbin ready to go. Frenchy, you said that the net cards had to flip the script. Well, it's getting heavy. Yeah, they, they yes. need to try to do it right here and quick. They only have five outs left. Here's a 1 0. Edmund takes a strike. Now they say hitting is contagious. Oldest cliche in the book. Lack of hitting is contagious as well. And the pressure with each passing inning as the Cardinals fail to score is just mounting. Edmund hits one sharply to right. Eaton going back. Leaps. Oh, what a catch! Adam Eaton. A leaping catch in the outfield and takes a hit away from Tommy Edmond. He's had two hits robbed in the last two games. And he hit that a lot better than I thought it did because it jumped and took off. I thought it was getting over his head for sure. 101 off the bat right here, but great job by Eaton. Great break and jumped at the perfect time. Edmund has some power to right field. He had a triple hitting right handed against the Braves yeah. in that fifth game and almost got this over the head of Edmund. So uh, sorry of Eaton. Edmund now has had a ball that Eaton just made a catch on and the no hitter last night Zimmerman caught an unbelievable line drive. Heck of a play.
Doolittle acknowledges Adam Eaton, who just drove in the two runs. Now he's got a defensive gem. Boy, the Nats are clicking, man. I mean, it is clicking everything they're doing. When you get on a streak like this, they've won 13 of their last 15 games. Heck of a play. Gathered himself, too. I thought, you know, Jeff, as he's running back, and he knows he can't just go over the shoulder. He's got to gather and leap. Zimmerman last night taking a hit away from Edmund. And then Eaton today. So not on the Tommy Edmund fan club. <laughs> a shot back up the middle. Doolittle hits the deck. DeYoung wiped him out on the mound. And a base hit, just the second hit of the game. And suddenly the Cardinals have a base runner with two out and some life. Daniel Hudson preparing in the bullpen. Jose Martinez about to pinch hit. Oh. That was a changeup he threw right there. And then hit the crowd. When you're pitching in that situation, you can hear the ball whizzing by your head. Yeah. First base runner he's allowed. He retired six in a row. And even with the right handed pinch hitter, Jose Martinez announced Dave Martinez is going to stick with his lefty. Broke up the no hitter last night in the eighth inning, did Jose Martinez. He has a power bat. He can make this a one run game in a hurry. He's the best weapon they have on their bench. Yeah, and with the lefty do little, it's a perfect opportunity to send him up there and see if he can make something happen and get this crowd back in the game. Against lefties this year, Jose Martinez hit 329, had five homers and just 70 at bats. And a big swing. No balls and two strikes. Doolittle has found it. At just the right time for the Nationals after they shut him down end of August. Fastball velocity is back in the mid 90s now. If he uses that changeup, he's got to bounce it. Fastball up is the pitch. 0 oh, 2 and a swing and a foul. Martinez hit yesterday that broke up the no hitter was on a changeup from Anibal Sanchez. This guy is long using a basketball term he covers the plate <laughs> so well and that's why I agree with Ron you got to stick with the fastball to yeah. me if you do throw that change up it better be down because those long arms get extension six seven is Martinez and even that one too tall for Jose Martinez I mean if you're the Cardinals you're just trying to get Goldschmidt to the plate with runners on base that's a challenge with two outs in this inning, but he's looming. Got to keep moving the line if you're St. Louis. Here's a one-two pitch, and whoa, mm. Suzuki made a nice play. That was almost over his head. That's not easy with a 94-mile-an-hour fastball. When you're trying to elevate a fastball, you've got to give it the appearance to the hitter that it's a pitch to hit. When it's this high, they'll lay off it 100% of the time. What a play by Suzuki. It was. Keeps a runner off second. Two and two now. And Martinez had a good cut. They're thinking the same thing we are right here because he's he's thrown an off speed pitch to almost every guy he's faced between last night and tonight. He's sticking heater on him. He is. He just has not been able to get it inside enough. Temptation if you're Dave Martinez right now, just as this inning progresses, you got Fowler, you'd rather him hit right handed. Wong is a lefty, you'd rather have that matchup, but now you're getting into some serious pitches Se here for Doolittle. Serious length after a four out save last night. Big spot, 2 2 pitch. And he fouls another one off. Expanding that strike zone, he's a free swinger, but he's. Tough to shake is Martinez. That that was the pitch he set a zone up on last night. He threw that change up and then came right back 95 upper part of the zone. Got him to swing through for the ball game. Two 
Do it again. Another 2-2. Two -two. And Martin. Oh, my goodness. He knows he missed one right there. Yikes. Every once in a while, the hitter's guessing right along with yeah. him. Yeah, I agree with you there. He saw that change up. He thought, he's, I'm selling out fastball. He right watched there. the at bat against Ozuna last yeah. night, too. Trying yep. to knock out another letter in Big Macklin. <laughs> he does have big power to the opposite field. Martinez has only faced two little ones prior to this at bat. 0 for 1 against him, but he's seen a lot of them here. Another foul ball. What in that bat. Terrific. What a matchup. It's 3 0, but the game could completely change if Martinez reaches. Well, and with who they have coming up, either later this inning or next inning, if you can get a run or even two here, you give yourself a chance with the big thumpers coming up. It was 0 2. 2 2. And do little deals again in the air center field. Hit well. Taylor leaps. And he missed it. It's going to go to the wall. De Young in the score. Martinez in the second base. And the door is open for the Cardinals. Tenth pitch of the at bat. A frozen rope over the head of Michael A. Taylor. I thought that ball from here seemed like it was knuckling and just took off. I think it, it knuckled. I also think it was 101 off the bat, but you see, he's got such long arms. The swing looks like he didn't get him. And I think Taylor got caught coming in and realized right here. And it nipped his glove, but I agree, Ron. Mm. So Eden made the play in right field. Taylor did not. After five foul balls, Jose Martinez sends one to the wall. Tying run at the plate. Here is Fowler. And on the first pitch, a fly ball to right. It is Eden. And Doolittle's going to survive. But the Cardinals score on a misplay by Michael A. Taylor. 3-1 to the ninth we go. Game two. Almost ninth inning. And Ryan Zimmerman will lead off for Washington. Zimmerman, Suzuki, and Taylor. It had been 24 consecutive scoreless innings for the Nationals before they give one up. Doolittle. Three hard hit balls off Doolittle. The line drive should have been played by Taylor. But the Cardinals do score. They are within two now. St. Louis's streak as an offense of consecutive scoreless innings ends at 22. And now bullpen continues. Patrick Corbin. Active. Yeah, Corbin is getting loose. We saw Hudson forming last inning. That's something where he could come in to face Wong. Just for Wong, one just batter, one hitter. And it's like a side session for him? Yeah. Then Goldschmidt and Ozuna. Boy, two big runs for the Nationals on the Adam Eaton two RBI double came on a two strike pitch with one out. Remember Corbin doesn't pitch till Tuesday. Mm -hmm. A day off tomorrow travel day. Monday is game three with Strasburg on the mound Corbin Tuesday in the air center field. Back is Fowler. And there is out. Number one. All right, Jeff, let's take a look at T Mobile 4D replay of that sequence with Martinez to Michael A. Taylor. And you see how strong he is, guys. He got him out front right here. It was a change up, and he hit it hard to center field, but watch him right here. Martinez thought he was going to be out, and Taylor came so hard that look at this right here before he knew it. Ron, he was in a bad spot. Yeah. Had no nowhere to go. Scored as a double and an RBI, but a play that Taylor would tell you he should have made. How do those two runs driven in by Eaton look right about now? 3-1 right. game now as Suzuki.
Takes a ball. Yeah, Doolittle thought he was out of the inning. Calm down. We're still ahead. <laughs> So how does a guy hit the ball that See, far, I think that that's hard? Taylor's telling him right there. I saw him hit it out front. That's why I'm coming in. And when that ball was hit, that's a 99% uh, catch probability. Yeah, right. Usually when a guy gets out front like that, it's more apt to be one of those they dunk into mm -hmm. center field. This one just happened to be 380 feet. With a seven-foot wingspan <laughs> of Jose Martinez. And that's the other thing. You don't see a guy with that wingspan right. swing the bat a lot he like hits that. bullets. Let me uh, pose this to you Ooh. managers in the booth. Yes. yes. Cardinals aren't hitting. Carpenter's in the lineup for his bat. Jose Martinez has given him some great at bats in this postseason. Do you yeah. consider putting him in the lineup and if, where? If they don't score more than the one run they've got in the last you inning, see it. he'll be after, in the lineup. Absolutely. After two games, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Swing and a miss. But also for the Cardinals, yes, you're up two for the Nats, but the Cardinals getting that one run with the guys you got coming off, Flan mm -hmm. gets on somehow, you give Goldschmidt, Azuna, Molina chances to tie it up. That's right. That's, you know, getting that one run, now it's a bloop and a blast. Two and two the count on Suzuki. That one misses. I'm just trying to think about where you put Martinez you're not going to play him at first That's you'd have to play his, right field play right move Edmund where Edmund to third base and then Carpenter Carpenter's on the bench okay so possibly doesn't make me a big Carpenter fan <laughs> right now I'd like the Carpenter family sorry about that Patrick Corbin up game four that might be something you see something to file away for later there's a cold strike three Helsley picks up a strikeout Boy, this young man has pitched so well in the postseason. Youngster with a hard slider and 95 plus on the fastball. That's kind of a backup slider, one that fooled Suzuki. Helsley has hit triple digits with his fastball in this postseason. Oklahoma native. Two outs now. Here's Michael A. Taylor. Shows bunt and a strike. Pulled it back. Now you can see Corbin Hudson on the right there. I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Let him try to get Wong. And then Hudson has just got to get Goldschmidt and Osuna. <laughs> yeah, it's not that's tough. All. <laughs> Coming off a long flight. I'll tell you what, I, I'm not a big fan of changing the lineup. I told you guys this earlier, but you know what? If they don't score again and you go one run and 18 innings on four hits, yeah. to me, anything's on the table. That, that, yeah, that, right. That's historic stuff. That's you know, what right. I'm saying. So. It, 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 at that point, you're doing whatever you can to try to get back in the series. One ball, one strike on Taylor. Swing and a foul. One and two now. And you know the problem we, we described before is the Cardinals defense has improved from 133 errors last year to 66 this year. One of the big reasons is Jose Martinez is not in the lineup every day. Right. He is a guy that can be a defensive liability but he can rake. And sometimes if you need, you need to drive in more than you let in. <laughs> Good time to file for the designated hitter in the NLCS. That would be perfect for the Cardinals. <laughs> 0-2 the count and Taylor on the ground foul. St. Louis did have six wins this year when they trailed after eight innings. They had a little bit of comeback magic in them. That's a big number to come back trailing after eight innings. Helsley trying to keep it at a two run deficit. He's retired the first two hitters. Zimmerman flew out to center. Suzuki is strikeout. And now another row two. And a swing and a foul. Taylor had a good cut. 99 with the fastball from Helsley. One of those wins came against the Cubs when they hit back to back home runs off Craig Kimball. I know that's the frustrating thing I'm sure for Mike Schilt right now if you were to put Michael's start and Wainwright start wrote him down and said you'd Take be it. at least one and one headed to Washington. Take it every time. Absolutely. Oh and two again to Taylor and he strikes him out. 
Helsley gets the punch out. One, two, three inning. Wong will start at the lefty. And then the big boys, Goldschmidt and Ozuna. Patrick Corbin on his way. He'll have at least one batter. We're headed to the bottom of the ninth with the Nats leading 3-1 in game two. Would you like the power to deem? Raise one to your fan family by Progressive, a grand slam for your budget. Visit Progressive.com and by Microsoft Circus. This 2019 National League Championship Series is presented by Geico. Oh, we got another thriller here. So you want to be a big league manager, and you're Dave Martinez. We're going to roll the dice here with his starting pitchers. Game four starter Patrick Corbin is on to face probably one batter, Jeff. Yeah, hey, listen, this could be a great move. It's also a little interesting when you got a guy like Hudson down in the pen with the stuff he has. If he gets on here, it's tough to bring him in to face Goldschmidt and Azuna with the guy on. You know, we've sent, spent a lot of time talking about Juan Soto, how good he is against left handers. Well, Colton Wong, 288 batting average this year against lefties. Always a threat to bunt as well. Cardinals need a base runner. And he swings and rolls over one. Dozier makes a play for out number one. Corbin comes on to get the lefty. And now Dave Martinez, he could not jump out of that dugout fast enough. Patrick Corbin, two pitches. The ultimate tune-up for a start. Gets the lefty. And now Martinez will bring on his closer. It looks like, just arrived. Looks like the infielders are saying, you get paid for that? <laughs> <laughs> One away in the ninth inning. We'll see you Tuesday, Patrick. Good job. <laughs> Pitching change. Hudson on to try to get the final two outs. We'll set him up after this. Position from the Toronto Blue Jays has now emerged as the Nationals closer. And Ron, for the first time, he will take the mound as a father of three. He will, and he's going to find an incredible inspiration from that. But it's going to be a tough road to hold because these two hitters, Goldschmidt and Ozuna, look at their numbers against Hudson. And that's why it was so big for Corbin to get that out right there because he does have his work cut out for him right here. When the Nats were 19 and 31, you could almost mark this game in the loss column right now. I mean, they never mm -hmm. could get their closers or their relievers to get the job done. But in this postseason, Hudson and Doolittle pitch nine and a third, one run, 11 Ks. Now Hudson, who was not with the team yesterday, pitching for the first time in his LCS, and he starts Goldschmidt with a strike. And starting back to game four of the NLDS, game five, game one last night, this, the starters guys are getting them into the seventh inning and making it a three-pitcher game. The starter, Doolittle Hudson. Under the radar trade deadline deal with the Blue Jays. Had just two saves with Toronto as Goldschmidt fouls it away. Think about the starters here for Washington. Anibal Sanchez and Scherzer giving Dave Martinez 14 and two thirds innings, which means if this is going to end at nine, you're only asking 10 outs out of your bullpen. Oh, and to the count. Goldschmidt. Yeah, nice pick back there. And you see Jan Gomes, by the way, behind the plate. I failed to mention Suzuki out. Well, he's caught Patrick Corbin all year. And being the best defensive catcher yeah. of the two, this absolutely makes sense right here. Just in case the Cardinals get a man on and want to run. Their best throwing catcher. Suzuki is lifted. One and two the count. And Goldschmidt sends it high in the air to left field, but playable. Soto makes the catch. And the Nats are an out away from a 2-0 lead in this NLCS. Goldschmidt caught a pitch there, Frenchie, and just popped it up. And when your offense is kind of stuck in a little yeah. rut like this, that's what happens a lot of times. He got a hanger right here, and as you said, just got under it a little bit. Hudson retires his first batter and Goldschmidt. Now it's Azuna. Last hope for the Cardinals. 
Ozuna was the last call last night as well. He struck out to end the game and a 2 nothing Washington win gets jammed a pop up foul territory this is going to stay playable and Zimmerman is under it and the Washington Nationals with a big old curly W on that one and they take a 2 0 series lead best of seven in LCS the Nationals are two wins away from a trip to the World Series Daniel Hudson comes in and makes that look easy. They started this year with their strength being their great starting pitching and that's what they've gotten in the first two games timely hitting and great defensive play by Eaton and Zimmerman uh, just a complete effort here by the Nationals and on the other side for the Cardinals the good thing for you is you got your ace Jack Flaherty going on Monday night. But guys if I'm them offensively I got to look at shaking some yeah. things up getting anything you can to get the offense going one run in two games for the Cardinals in this NLCS just four hits the Washington Nationals lock it down here in St. Louis Daniel Hudson converting his third save of the postseason that is the most among all closers in the postseason and the Nats in their first appearance in the championship series now up 2-0 their franchise record books first time they've had a 2 0 lead since the Expos of 81 that was in the NLDS so uncharted territory for the Washington Nationals but they come on the road and win the first two games with extraordinary pitching Sanchez and Scherzer with the victories wouldn't it be sweet irony that the bullpen which was the issue all summer long turns into the strength in the postseason that's the way it's set up so far they're headed for the exits here at Bush Stadium. Let's send it down on the field with Lauren Shahadi. Kurt, Max was vintage mixing his pitches. What did you see from your perspective? Uh, he was he was pretty good today. You know, um, you know, he had a feel for every single one of his pitches, uh, locating the fastball. You know, really not missing in the middle of the plate. And when he does that, I mean, his stuff's his stuff's good. Your manager told me sometimes you disagree on game plan, go back and forth. Did you agree today, mixing the pitches and everything? Yeah, it was funny. We talked about it earlier. We said uh, he said every time that he thought it wasn't the right pitch, and I called it, he threw it. And every time that you know I thought it wasn't the right pitch, I I put it down. It worked. So everything kind of worked today. And uh, it, it, he said you know it really wasn't the wrong pitch we threw today. It was everything was pretty good. I see him pacing in between innings in the tunnel. You talk to him during a no hit bit or no? Oh yeah, I talked to him. He comes up and talks to me. Um, you know so I don't know if that's something he's done all the time or if it's just me but you know we talk all the time and uh, you know we feed off each other I, I give I give it right back to him too so it's good went through concussion protocol how are you feeling Kurt? I feel great um, you know obviously um, you know it's scary scary thing right there but uh, you know nothing like getting hit and hit in the face almost and then coming and playing with a game where you can't see the ball the first six innings so you know, it was good enjoy the win all right thanks guys well he's got a reason to smile the Washington Nationals have now won 14 of their last 16 games and Ron this sets up another <laughs> world class starting pitching matchup for game three you know I, I said before the game that uh, in my opinion I thought that the Cardinals had to win this game to get back in the series but they do have such a great strength in Jack Flaherty but he's going up the, against the great Strasburg and Strasburg has been traditionally unbelievable in the post. Yeah, I mean, if anything, Steven's been their best pitcher the last mm -hmm. two months of the season, and his changeup right now on curveball are so good, and that's what has really given the Cardinals hitters trouble. It, it's it's not Flaherty, it's the offense of the right. Cardinals yeah, that has right. to come. Yeah. yeah, Wainwright pitched a beauty. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, yesterday Miles Michaelis was outstanding. So you're right, shakeups with the offense for the Cardinals. We'll see how that goes. There you see Max Scherzer. He's standing by with Lauren. Take it away, Lauren. Max, congratulations. Five days ago, you said your arm was hanging off. It didn't look like it today. How's it feeling now? Yeah, I came in and started. It didn't feel great. Um, we really didn't have my arm slot in the beginning. Uh, but then around the fourth and fifth inning, I, I felt like everything kind of loosened up in my shoulder, and I really found my arm slot and was able to start driving the fastball uh, into locations I wanted. And uh, just worked with Zook the whole day, uh, trusting what he was putting down and you know, staying within our game plan and just executing pitches. Were you on the same page earlier? Yeah, we were on the same page. Uh, there, you know, there's multiple ways to skin a cat, um, and it was just trying to find what was going to work early in the game. Um, and I just kept telling him, "Hey, don't worry. Later in this game, I'm, it's going to free up, and I'll start finding him this fastball location." And uh, you know, that's what that's what we uh, do well. We work together well, and uh, we know how to uh, kind of play the chess game and move things around. 
You didn't want to talk about the hometown angle before the game. You wanted to focus. But at any point during that game, were you thinking, I'm doing this in St. Louis, sharing the mound with Adam Wainwright? No, uh, hell no. <laughs> I'm here I'm here to win. Uh, all the memory lane stuff, that's for some other time. Right now, it's about competing, going out there and trying to win ball games. Ultimate competitor. Thanks, Matt. All right, thank you. Brian. Oh, man, I love that. <laughs> I love game face. <laughs> well oh. done. Max Scherzer, seven strong here today. Sanchez and Scherzer combined just two hits and 14 and two-thirds. Apologies to Chesterfield. <laughs> <laughs> that comes really later. loves y'all. <laughs> for Ron Darling, Jeff Francoeur, for Lauren Shahadi and our terrific TBS team here in St. Louis. I'm Brian Anderson saying so long for Bush Stadium. You've been watching the NLCS presented by Geico on TBS, your exclusive home for the National League Championship. Coming up next, the postseason show on TBS presented by Physicians Mutual.